Welcome to Respiricon 2. Thank you very much. This is hosted by Public Invention, Rice 360 of Rice University, Sirius Global, uh, which is run by Marcelja here, who's with us, and the Every Breath Counts Coalition, um, which is led by Leith Greenslade, who's going to be our, our keynote speaker. Uh, I am Robert L. Reed. I'm the president of Public Invention. I call myself the head invention coach. I'm um, the founder of Public Invention, which is a U.S. 501c3 public charity that invents in the public for the public. The basic idea of Public Invention is to create open source hardware inventions similar to the open source software movement. Uh, I have a PhD in computer science, and I lead public invention projects in software, microelectronics, mechatronics, and mathematics. Please take a few moments to uh, follow us on Twitter at, at public invention, I'm sorry, at pub invention, P-U-B-I-N-V-E-N-T-I-O-N. -E follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, I really would like people to subscribe to the YouTube channel because we make we post a lot of really good content and not very many people watch it. I think it's a little under watched. Um, during the conference, um, please tweet at us uh, using the hashtag Respiricon if you want to say something to the world about this conference, whether you think it's good, bad, indifferent, or you want to talk about some, one of the talks that you've you've heard. Um, also, please follow our sponsors. Uh, at Rice 360, at Rice U, at Stop Pneumonia, and at Sirius Global. Um, our goal in this conference is for people to make connections, which they might nor not normally make. So we have a permanent live video conferencing system called Rehive. There is a link to it in the main website, but a link is also going to be posted right here in the chat. Um, in the chat, you'll see a number of links which, which you can go to. This allows you to do... Um, one-on-one -on -one video chats during the conference with other conference goers. So if you want, just like in a in real life conference, when you, after you finish a talk, you go out to the coffee bar and get a cookie and, and drink some tea or coffee, and you can talk to people in real life, including sometimes the speakers, you should be able to do that at this conference. Um, after each speaker or panelist speaks, we're going to ask them to go to rehive and stay at the speaker's table for a while so that you can interact with directly with them. If you prefer text, I sometimes like to uh, text things. We have a public invention Slack channel, which is open. There is an invitation. You can go there. Please join the channel uh, Sharp Respiricon 2 to discuss this because we have other channels for other purposes. Um, we have a Google map, and we'd like everybody to place a um, pin, not on their address, we don't want to know your physical address, but on the city or the nation that you're from, so we can, can show that how much of the globe we cover, which I believe will be quite a bit. Um, as the conference proceeds, we also have a shared Google Doc. You can think of this as just a wall that you can scribble on to write anything you want. You can just put thoughts and questions there. We also have a guest book, which is a spreadsheet. Um, that is going to be public. So don't put your name or your email address there unless you want it to be public. Uh, I am a professional. My email uh, address has been known to the whole planet for 20 years. Um, so it's not a problem for me. But some of you may not want your email address known, in which case don't put it in the guest book. Um, and then finally, uh, Rice University's Biomedical Engineering Society is hosting a hackathon, uh, not this weekend, but it sort of starts this weekend. At the close of this uh, conference on Sunday, we're going to announce the challenges. And next weekend, there's going to be a uh, hackathon uh, sponsored by Rice University for undergraduate teams. Um, the last I checked, there was a team from Malawi signed up, but there were only two teams signed up. Uh, so there's room for 12 teams. If you know undergraduates or you are an undergraduate, you might want to mention that to them. Finally, um, we, the organizing committee and myself have written the Open Medical Technology Manifesto. Um, if, I'd like everybody to read it. If you agree with it, then sign it. Don't sign it if you don't agree with it and possibly share it. It represents my personal opinion about what we should do coming out of this. Um, so Rehive is incredibly cool and important. Um, I had a little video 
uh, of, of how to use it. Maybe I'll show that in just a second when I'm done with this talk, if, if I have time. We'd like everybody to go there so that they can have a good personal experience and talk to people. Obviously, it's hard to talk to people and listen to the webinar at the same time, but we're going to have five minute breaks and um, there's plenty of room to uh, uh, talk to people. You don't have to listen to every talk um, that's occurring here. Um, the main website, which is at this link right here, is where we will post news and any changes to the schedule. Uh, in case something goes wrong technically or there's a major change to the schedule, we will post it at the website. That's where you can find the detailed schedule okay. if you want to um, uh, okay. find. So maybe one of the panelists is, is speaking. Uh, let me just finish. Um, uh, oh, you know what? No. Um, so uh, if something changes there, you can use that to find the exact time of a talk that you want to listen to. So I recommend that you check that to examine the schedule, think about which talks you definitely want to see. Okay, looks like we have a problem there. We'll deal with that later. Um, okay, so um, I'd like to review this, this schedule here. Um, Leith is going, to, is going to give the keynote speech, which is titled the, an, the, An Urgent Need for Open Source in an Era of Respiratory Pandemics. Um, university research, uh, I'm sorry, then Maria Odin is going to talk about university research as a starting point. Um, Alex Rothkopf is going to talk about biomedical equipment supply chains in distress. Um, then we're going to have a panel, which should be very interesting. We're going to have um, Amarpri Rai, uh, who's a businesswoman who distributes medical devices, um, and uh, Professor Roger Rasul um, and Victor Sutran talking about if open source can really change the world, which is what we're this conference is sort of devoted to. Um, then we're going to hear from uh, one of my favorite organizations, Open Source Medical Supplies. They're going to talk about the great success that they had. Um, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Ginny Malloy from Cambridge is going to talk about um, from open science to open medical devices. Then Open Source Medical uh, Supplies is going to talk about the success they had distributing open source PPE. And then finally, this is quite new, Dr. Botazi, um, from the Baylor School of Medicine is going to talk about a vaccine that they developed called Corbevax, which is um, much easier to manufacture and I believe doesn't require the same cold chain uh, problem that some of the other vaccines had. And this may be a game changer for low and middle income countries that want to develop their own vaccine. And then finally, very importantly, we're going to have a live showcase of open source teams demoing equipment that they have created. Some of these are really um, important uh, devices like Infero Sinjani, who's, who's built an oxygen analyzer that's very inexpensive. They'll be doing live demos. That will not occur in the webinar, but will occur in Rehive. So you have to go to the Rehive instance, as we mentioned, in order to see that live showcase. And we'll be posting that link um, uh, periodically. Then on Sunday, my friend Pierre Longchamp starts. Um, he probably has the worst time slot because it's early on Sunday morning in the United States, talking about open source med tech development. Gonna, he's a regulatory expert. This is going to be really important. And then Larry Kilizuski is going to talk about really one of the most important talks of the conference, the missing step of going from development or proof of concept um, to uh, um, manufacturing designs. Um, then Ms. Aloyo, who Deborah Aloyo, who's here as a panelist, is going to talk about the needs for African medical device designs. And then we're going to have a panel, which includes Dr. Nelson Ever Baroni, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and um, a number of other people, including uh, Alejandro Velez from the World Health Organization, talking about regulatory compliance and testing labs. How do we move forward? George Contreras, professor of law, is going to talk about legal aspects of open source. And then I will talk about my own project, the Free Spirico project, um, and a license which we're trying to create. 
Um, and then finally, the, the closing keynote will be given by a medical doctor, Dr. Noreen Ahmed, um, who just a few days ago was working in an ICU, but has also done a lot of work in low and middle income countries. And then finally, um, Dr. Sanjay Gadasali, who's a medical doctor, will be giving an investor Q&A from the perspective of an angel investor. That will occur on Sunday at about one o'clock. That will be in Rehive so that you guys can personally ask questions of him. So it will not be in the Zoom webinar, but we will explain that, that more. So get ready to be engaged in the kickoff for the next decade of a conversation that is, I hope is going to change the way we make medical devices in the next decade. What we're trying to do is to democratize and distribute this technology around the world and open source is a major way of doing that. Now, when you say the word open source, it can be very confusing at first. Um, open source does not mean nonprofit. Um, it sometimes means big profit. You can make a lot of money with open source devices, but how you do that, we're gonna have to explain and talk about. So we'll be exploring issues um, in this conference in the entire life cycle of a device being created. Okay, um, so we'd like you to sign the manifesto. Our basic opinion is open, shareable, repairable medical technology will make us all healthier. So we've got some questions here we'd like all of you to consider um, leading up to a, a call to action that will happen at the end of the conference. So the goal here eventually is to generate concrete actionable plans and policies from this conference that we can actually take action on so that we can help our brothers and sisters and children now in the future. So please use the technology that we've provided to form connections, meet new people, find like-minded thinkers, learn from someone and teach someone, but most of all have fun.